teléfono. book should we read from today? (laughs) Set it to the page? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're good. He sets it to the the exact page. to survive but the books are still there some things are uh, antiquated Mm -hmm. style and and scholarship but some things are still some things are dealing with the original tradition so that that doesn't change Matrikta Mangala, Mangala Bakta, Brindavio Serva Lokaya Mangalam, Om Stapakaya Chadarmasya Serva Dharma Sarupine, Avatar of Arishtaya Ramakrishna Mangalam, Om Stapakaya Chadarmasya Serva Dharma Sarupine, Avatar of Arishtaya Ramakrishna Mangalam, Om Sarashiva Samarambam, Shankaracharya Majamam, Ashmaracharya Purayantam, Vande Gurum Paramparam. Om Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Devo Param Brahman, Tasmai Sri, Guru Namaha, Tasmai Sri, Guru Namaha. Shri Ganesha, Sharada Guru Bhyo, Namaha. Let's get a little bit closer, a little far away. That's much better, I think. <laughs> a little bit. Daima. <coughs> So we are we are on volume twenty eight, or twenty eight. Actually, twenty ninth. One of them didn't get recorded, and in the, in the series, it's twenty eight. This is our twenty ninth talk on on the on our um, increasingly misnamed two volume two talks on Kali Puja, introduction to Kali Puja. Um, and last week we were discussing the uh, the uh, the Prana Pratistana, the establishing after doing the internal worship within the heart, establishing the deity within the heart, um, and visualizing the, the worship mentally um, in the different forms where that can be done, then, the, uh, then the, the process by which, and the science and the philosophy and theory behind then bringing that pran- the prana of the deity, the life of the deity, and putting it, placing it as if or actually in the image, both as we talked about the different ways that could be understood into the into the image, transferring it through mudra, mantra, prana, and and and, um, and through the medium of the flower, remember, and then placing it at the feet, at the heart of the deity, of the picture, in the center of a yantra, top of a shivalingam, on top of the khat, the water pot, like that. <clears throat> and you can see this very long, complicated, fairly complicated. I mean, it can be as 
It doesn't have to be complicated, but our method we've described is a complicated method where the identity, the identity of the goddess, the conscious, I mean, to, to awaken the, the goddess's consciousness within our own consciousness or our consciousness within the other goddess's consciousness. And then like literally being able to worship her outside. It's not just figuratively. Part of it's figuratively also. That's okay. I mean, we don't mind that language. But it's not, Tantra doesn't use that language. It's literally the Divine Mother then is, it, the deity is then treated non-different from the Absolute, right? I was reading Swami Shivananda, he has a small book on all about Hinduism. It's like actually a very good Swami Shivananda from Rishikesh. <coughs> so it's a, it has its own charm for sure, right? It's a non-apologetic book. <laughs> from the, we talked last week about the, uh, what is it, the Western gaze. It not, not, doesn't, have, doesn't have the Western gaze. It's a can be a very bold book, but some place, But he mentioned so you can have a little, look, a little tiny shalagram this big, right? Or a little tiny crude statue of Narayan, right? Right. And then what you do? You put it there, and then you chant Purusha Shukta. This guy is he has thousands of heads and thousands of arms and eyes to see everywhere. He's a cosmic being that gets sacrificed beginning of time out. Just like to a little statue this big, <laughs> right? You know. So that's it's it's not it's like. That stat, that little statue, that little tiny thing, this or sometimes a very big statue, is like it's conceived. The infinite is worshipped. It's worshipped as the infinite. It is the infinite, you know. So it's very uh, significant. And we mentioned last. I don't have my notes from last week, but the different ways of looking at it, of like of, of uh, establishing our attention or invoking uh, as, as her as a, uh, recognizing the image, the. Or they uh, as a, as a symbol, we think all these type of things, but or actually just actually or manifesting what's already there, these different things. And I was I had some things to read, I never got to them, so I'm going to back up a little bit and before and take a few steps and jump to the next section, only because I think it's it's most people haven't re heard the style of um of of uh, uh, Sir John Woodruff, Arthur Avalon. He has his own style of his 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 way of arguing for tantra for the tantric worldview. In the light of the modern worldview, <clears throat> just one section I really wanted to read. Let me find it here. Okay. So first, a little reading of, of some sources. Those who call it, those who call the Arias society adulterous, not adulterous, 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 adulterous is different. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, sorry, I'm my in my Mexican Spanish. I always joke I have a American teeth and a Mexican tongue, so they don't always match. <laughs> so I've I learned the words in our family. The, the words the were the same word. When my parents, so I've, these words have never become fully. I, Idolatrous, not I. No. Idolatry. Yeah, idolatry means idolatrous. No, I mean, I mean, it's also so. I mean, you know what I mean. The worship of idols, not the cheating on your on on your spouse. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> so some consider it to be the same type of crime. I mean, the Bible they're listed right next to each other, right? As equally horrible, <laughs> right? It's a very strange uh, prejudice to have. To, but anyways, we won't. Uh, 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 on on the grounds that it. Uh, uh, and who ridicule it on, the, on, on these grounds should now open the door of their hearts and dispelling the darkness of their eyes, consider whether the children of the Arya race, who are, as it were, tens, in a mil tens of millions of, uh, of, of Kohinoors adorning the heads of the community of worshippers in the three worlds, really worship a Devi made of earth or a Devi whose substance is consciousness. We started, we talked about this, even Sri Ramakrishna's one of his opening conversation, second conversation was, was M. One of the things he, he challenged is, is his idea that it's, what is it? Mati Pratima, right? An image of mud. And M is saying you shouldn't worship him. You should know that you're not worshiping an image of mud, you're worshiping God. You know. So Takwar didn't like this idea that the mission of, and it's not image of mud, it's not, not Mati, it's Chinmayi, right? Chin, and actually, I, I was trying to remember how Sami Chetan, Sami Ambikanand has been work, he worked. Many months just on this one word, Chinmayi Pratima. Chinmayi means full of consciousness, right? Like Ananda Mayi means full of bliss, right? But Chinmayi means exactly 
but this ending is like a chinmayi. So he's not here. If he was here, he could explain the. It's it's in Bengali. It's added for emphasis, right? So it's like like consciousness. It's like it's 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 a uh, if of consciousness herself, right? So it's not just con- it's not just consciousness. Consciousness herself. So it's an interesting. There's a little slight important it's not slight it's a huge theologically important point that 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 uh, it doesn't put like kali and the deities like oh they're aspects of consciousness right consciousness is is uh, one of her it's her guna not you know i'm talking about that like consciousness is one of her qualities she's not one of the qualities of con- one something within consciousness or another thing he was like this other term that the talker is using he says anandamayi uh, Ichamoi, uh, what was the other one? Brahmamoi, and was the third? There was a fourth one. I forget. Do you remember? Somebody's mentioned. And the, hmm? There's a nanamoi. Ich, like, oh, she's nanamoi means she's blissful, full of bliss, right? And just an easy way to say. And she's um, nanamoi. She's uh, uh, Ichamoi. Lila moi also lila moi. Ichamoi means she's willful, full of will. I mean, she does what she wants, right? And then uh, lila moi. She's full of play, expression. You know, like so, she's playful. We could say that's the same thing, but he also then he says the same line. He said here he says chinmayi, chinmoyi, chin uh, chaitanya moyi, chaitanya moyi. She's full of consciousness, or brahm brahma moyi. She's full of brahman. She can't say brahman, you know, blissful, playful, willful, brahmanful. That's a weird, <laughs> right? But there's a there's a because the way it's being used and M makes a point we did, we've been discussing and discovering the last few days. Um, he goes out of his way to point point this out that, that and even here I think even under here it uses Brahma Moi, Mother Brahma Moi, and the footnote says Brahman itself, not like like uh, uh, like Brahman is one of Ma's qualities, right? And she's full of that quality. It's like she is the thing itself. Right, and so when you say when something's you're full of something, it's another another way of saying rather than I'm, I have it within me, I can. She's the container of it. She's the container of consciousness. She contain. It means she's a, she's larger than consciousness. She's larger than Brahman. She's larger than bliss. All these things are her gunas. She's not a symbol, a lower symbol of these absolute principles. These absolute principles are just aspects of her. She encompasses all these things. Anyway, this is this is the point. Um, what is the need of mantras, yantras, yoga, meditation, concentration, and so forth, if the worship of Devi, if in the worship of Devi made of earth? Why all these things? If it's just a, a statue of earth and not actually her, you don't need to. You don't need to bathe there. You don't need to do these things, right? If the earthen image be the Devi, why invoke into into this? If the earthen image be the Devi, if the statue is God and not God, I'm mean, in the larger principle. Uh, why, uh, why establish life in it again? And who in the world is such a fool as to invoke earth into earth? Moreover, if gurus, after thorough, invest- thorough investigation into the things of the visible world, and who are unequaled in their power of dis- to display the principles of spiritual life, have egregiously blundered in not recognizing that earth is earth, who is there in the world who can rectify such a blunder? But we say they are real. They they that they realize it to be the mother and not earth. This is the goddess herself, the divine mother. They made themselves and the earth blessed by bringing the mother into earth, and by themselves seeing and then displaying to others the presence of Brahma Moi in every molecule and atom of the Brahmanda of this cosmic egg, which is the un- name for the universe. It is therefore with a heart rent with sorrow that we say that it is the descendants of these very men who, though through the influence of the pernicious system of non aryan education, Western education, have lost all spiritual insight and are themselves ruined by their thought that brother, that mother Brahma Moi manifests out, manifest out of the grace to devotees and establish in the form which she has assumed out of favor to sadhakas is not the mother but mere earth. A lot. You can see he's he, he's tangled. That's why he's not super popular anymore. <laughs> Even when the books came out, he wasn't super popular. But you have to have a little patience and the old way of writing. How can those who are engrossed in play with earth understand the play of mother? 
O mother of the world, what trouble thou bringest on thy children. Even if, on account of this trouble, we are unable to understand the truth concerning her by our own independent effort, we have surely the privilege to understand the account which she has given of herself in the form of the Shastras and the scriptures. But of this, but of this privilege, also we are almost deprived through our ill fortune. Through want of instruction from competent gurus and by the force and of the force of sadhana, we have lost a privilege to understand her commands, even while seeming to understand them. O, follow, o follower of the idol theory, how ridiculous it is for you to call the devata's image an idol. The Devi's substance is eternal consciousness appearing in her earthen form. Consciousness appearing as earth. In her eyes, infinite crores of living forms, a crore is 100 million or 10 million, 10 million, infinite groups of 10 million living forms, such as you, are as dolls that have no account. Know it for certain that to think of her as an idol is not the effect of an auspicious glance from her. I love this. Like to think of her that she is an idol is not the sign of her grace. <laughs> but usually we think, oh, we're very enlightened. By, my, by the Bible Mother's grace, we've been enlightened by a modern, modern, by modern perspective. Even if you find it difficult to understand such things as devotion, piety, knowledge, or faith, you too recognize with bowed heads the shakti of things. With what heart then do you disbelieve the appearance through the operation of mantra shakti? of a superworldly super worldly shakti, unseen by the senses and mind of men such as you and I. Anyways, this is a, you get a little, I want to give a little bit of the flavor of the, this old style. He was a, a defense of, of, a, of a traditional view. Of course, he could also be critiqued because he was a Westerner looking, doing research on, on early texts. Right, a uh, very fascinating personality. Uh, if you know his story, I think he was was he German? I think he might have been German. I think he was German, and um, um, I should know more, but I think he was German, and he was a judge for the British government, and he was in a certain sense assigned some translation work in, in uh, of of this, what some of the native texts, right? But then he fell in love with them and, and got initiated by proper gurus in the tradition and became a sadhak in these things. So, anyways, I just wanted to give a little bit of flavor before moving. We're not, we're not going to return to this probably ever. So <laughs> there's more. The whole thing actually from from this page on, it's all just one wonderful descriptions. And I strongly suggest this is from Principles of Tantra at the very end of Volume Two. If you have it at home or look for it online, you can read it online. I was reading really from page like 505 on. It gets really that's his defense. Actually, next couple pages he really holds it. So anyway, so the next part, so this is the, uh, uh, um, when we, the, kind of the esoteric science of, 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 of invoking uh, uh, the devata, consci the, the conscious entity, the supreme entity into, uh, into the image, to, the one who's in within us, one who's everywhere, hidden, who's realized internally and recognized internally is then projected or invited or invoke, we use that language, establish, we use this, we use this language. Just be careful because we're not establishing her. We're, we're not her boss, <laughs> right? We're inviting her, but that language is there, you know. If I please, please come and sit down. I'm, uh, you could say, I've seated you, but it's your, I'm simply inviting you and it's just the language is there. You have to be careful not to. I remember one time I made a comment like, oh, uh, you can, they could install the deity. So no, you can't install the deity. I got chastised that this language is wrong. If you can't install the deity, we invite the deity. You just say, oh, did you take initiation? You can't take initiation. It's only given to you. You know, it's like it's sometimes it's just too sharp on the on the language. You know, I understand the point. You know, we sometimes we use the language not carefully, but it can be too much. But but it's a whole. But 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 we we're inviting her. We created an environment for her to manifest. We're, and so the the next thing once we've established, invited, established the fly, and put her prana there. Right, Ya Parami Guru, may this be supreme, may this be the supreme. Then what do we do? Immediately we start treating her, treating the image as if it's literally her. Right? Not symbolic, it's like literally. So what do you do when somebody first comes? It's like, Jai, you've come. Right? And so then you start treating them as if, like, so who's come? Right? And so the tradition, this is called uh, um, uh, Upasana, of worship. Right? Actually, Upasana, you know, we have this word Vipassana, right? 
Amber Baba Haridas in the, uh, up in the, at the Madonna Center, they have this retreat, their annual Upasana retreat. And so you have to be really careful because it may not be what you think. It's like a Vipassana retreat, you don't chant, you take off all your beads, mm-hmm. you know, they're watched to put pressure. I mean, you know, this, I want to, I want, I probably end up um, caricaturing the system. So I have to be careful not that I don't have much knowledge of it, but of the system, right? It's not that. It's Upasana retreat, the method of worship. Right, so it's about bhakti, about mantras and mudras and yantras and and how to print. You know, that's like we've been doing. This is our upasana class in a certain sense. How to do the worship, or what's the nature of the worship? And upasana, just like the word upanishad, right, comes from the word coming from a word to um, means to sit near, right. So upasana, the worship of God. It's interesting. We have so many ideas of what worship. Last last week we talked about different ideas of what worship meant, um, but upasana gives a lot of clues means to sit near to be close to somebody right to, to, to be near them right and so it's like like the Upanishad is sitting near the guru you sit near the guru and that's the way the teachings are uh, given type of satsang so Upasana is being near God so that's the thing is when you've like if she's you and everything you're not near her she's just by herself right you know like either we, you know we don't we don't realize her so she's non-existent and if we're identity, identical with her, then then it's only her, right? So this play of duality is to be, you want to be near, you want to love somebody, you need a, a sense of separateness, but being near means not so separate, being connected, right? So it's not, it's not, it's not the same, like, like in, we use the word yoga, right? And yoga means often, often of course, we know in the, in the, in the Yoga Sutra it has its own definition, Right, but the word yoga usually means union. Right, it comes from this word. Right, but what's the goal? What's the goal of what's the classically defined goal of yoga in of the Yoga Sutra? Kavalyam, which is like aloneness, almost singularity. It's a different type of. Of course, it may be describing so negative and positive language, the same spiritual or similar spiritual state. In fact, we're not going to discuss like that. But this is not kavalyam either. Right. This is not. This is not. You don't just alone in the supreme self. The supreme self alone with supreme self. This is, you. This is uh, com- commun- A better word is communion. I think, right? Communion is it's connection, union, connection, community. All these different friendship, uh, intimacy, or uh, uh, so that's this is that sitting near, right? And so what you do, you establish. I mean, she's not just. She's like right to the pujari. She's like within, literally within hand's reach. You can actually breathe, <laughs> and breathe. You can't go further in your breath than you can go your breath. He's right here, right? Which means she's right here. You know, what, you know. It's a very intimate thing, and so, how do you treat her when when you've invited her, the one to be manifested, and then the one to be manifested near you, right? So that you can you can express your devotion, your love, affection, uh, these intimate, the most intimate of, of expressions. Right. How do you do that? What do you do with that? So sometimes, if you imagine, like even with our with a close friend or a family member, right, a romantic a romantic connection, and there's some, it becomes you don't know what to, you get overwhelmed. You don't know what to say. You like look at each other oddly. You know, <laughs> you know, it's like it's we don't know. We don't have the language, especially with, imagine with things that are completely overwhelming, right? In the in the Devi in the Devi Bhagavatam, when the gods see the Divine Mother. Right, first thing they do, they go into ecstasy and they start crying, and they can't they can't see anything through the tears of their eyes. So what can they say? What what really what's they get overwhelmed, right? Their mind, they get a little control of their mind, or Ma withdraws a little bit of that experience, the shock and awe of the universal experience, right? And becomes instead she becomes she sits in front of him, right? First as an infinite pillar of light, then as the Devi is Bhuvaneshwari, the fourth picture in our list there. At Bhuvaneshwari Devi, right? And then they slowly, but they don't know what to say. And this happens a lot in the scriptures where the gods don't know what to say, or the sages don't know what to say, overwhelmed. But they 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 are they all went to good they, they all they all went to good uh, Veda school, Vedic Mantra school, right, or Tantra school. Right. And so it, and they learn mantras. They know the traditional ways of saying. So you can couch your emotions, which we don't know, we don't know how to express, we don't even know what they are, and couch them in the words given to us by the ancients. Right, so so with it, oh okay, like like all of a sudden some really important person comes and you go, oh, we don't have to do what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Because oh well, what was it? well, first thing, have him sit down and ask and get him a glass of tea, get him a glass of water. It's like oh okay, we can do that. You can and you can start. You have traditional etiquette 
to deal with things that we don't know. Otherwise, we wouldn't know what to do, right? Even with common things, but imagine if like a great famous or over or the the most wonderful person shows up, what do you do? You can sit there and cry, right? <laughs> Somebody who sits there and cry wouldn't make a good pujari. <laughs> right? That's the problem, you know. It's the proper response. <laughs> But it, it wouldn't make a good pujari, right? So you want somebody instead to take that, in, that, 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 we want to instead take that and express it in ways that were given to us, revealed maybe even by her. We believe the tantras are given by Shiva and conversation between Shiva and Shakti, right? She herself revealed, when I appear to you, this is how to get me to come, show up, and this is what you say when I show up, mm-hmm. right? That's called, that's called the tantra, tantra shastra, right? Uh, uh, and so it's, and so, Generally, the, 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 the way we do worship in the temple, uh, in the puja and the temple in general, it's, it's kind of a mixture, we may mention this before also, the mixture of the way you treat an honored guest, right? And so that's because she's, she's like, of course, she's the most intimate guest, but she's invited as if a guest. Like even if your mom comes over, she's not a guest, she's your mom, right? But you still, oh, mom, you know, do you need to use a restroom, freshen up, have a kind of get your cup of tea, do you need, you know, slow, you do... And then slowly you figure out what you, you you still treat her as if a guest, right? So you treat her as a guest has re, 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 uh, come, or in an established temple, uh, sometimes the mood is not so much as a as a, a guest, but as a queen or king in a court, dabar, I think they call it, right? In in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in a giving audience, right? So the temple doors open, the, and, and even the arati is done with with wicks and wicks whisks. These are signs of royalty, you know, and then. Uh, uh, and they're facing, so you, people make their, you come in front of the queen or king and you make your case, get their blessings. You know, so sometimes it's that mood in some the temple. But generally, the, the, the mood of the pujari usually in the, in the daily in, intimate puja, maybe not the public aritis and, and, and public darshans, uh, is, is that of, of, of an honored guest. So, so in Indian culture, there is an established protocol for a guest, right? And so... These become the standards of the upachadas, upachadas, the, the the offerings, and so in this little our little kali book, little simple kali puja, it's it's called. We get there. It's called external worship, bahaya puja, external puja, and then we're, we're given the the five a five punch upachada puja, punch five item. There is also dash upachada puja, worship was ten items. There is sodasha. Upachara puja, 16 items. That's considered a full puja. But actually, there's also 32 items. There's 52 items, 54 items. There's three items. There's seven items. There's 13 items. There's 64 items. There's all kinds of ways of, of analyzing from different texts, right? But the, the core of it, you're going to find, it's with some variation. There's going to be a five-item worship, which is given a small book. There's a 10-item worship, which most temples will do daily. That's like the daily, a little more elaborate puja. And a 16-item worship, which is usually considered like a like a, on a special festival, like during Navaratri right now, the spring Navaratri, um, or uh, you know Kali Puja, Janmashtami, Shivaratri. These are the the full pujas, larger pujas are done, right? And which each of the the the, the if it's a five item worship is very simple, and therefore the the preparation for a five item worship is also correspondingly simple, right? A ten item worship is more complicated, so the preparation for that is correspondingly more complicated. So it works kind of like that, and that's one of the reasons why you don't people don't do a six hiding sixteen item worship every day because it requires, although the six between a five item worship and a sixteen item worship, the difference in the in the actual offerings may be ten minutes, or less depends how fast you know you do it you know, it could be very simple you know, right? But the preparation may be the difference between twenty minutes and forty minutes or forty minutes and two hours. An what's the difference between what's the difference between the daily puja and the puja puja? Not much. Like it's roughly the same puja. It's a few more items of worship and a fire ceremony stuck at the end, but it takes it takes three hours. The daily puja doesn't take three hours, and it's only it's roughly the same puja, but as as it expands, there's a corresponding complication. That's why we've given the simple kali pujas, the five item puja, and so those five items are are um, ganda pushpa. Uh, dupa, Deepa, Naivedyam. This is a given. Maybe I'll see here. <clears throat> this is from the Nibandha Tantra. 
Nanibanda Tantra says Ganda Pushpa Dupa Deepa Naivejam. These are the five Upacharas. A sadhaka should always use these five in worshipping his Ishta Devata. So that's the that's considered like the in a certain sense the minimum for so and you can see we do we we do, we offer we spray for perfume for fragrant we offer an oil or perfume so a common thing we we usually we spray a flower with perfume and offer it or something we'll put like a, a fragrant oil or something right that's or like that and then flowers that's obvious and incense and light so these are simple but those five don't really have the flavor of inviting a guest. Right, it's like it's like sit there while I, you know, wave incense and you know, it's like it's not quite the same. It doesn't have the same flavor. The five item doesn't have that. We just hold a little uh, uh, setup about inviting the guests. The five item actually doesn't. You don't actually do that for a guest. The ten item and sixteen item better represent that. And so, in the puja that we're kind of reading from is we do it was actually I think it's this book. I think it's ten items, right? The thing we put in. In my daily use, I, I don't read the list, and I think I just, even the super simplified form, I usually do the 16 item, but it's actually a 10 item puja. And so, first, when somebody shows up, you invite, in the 16, I'll, I'll do the 16 item. The first one is uh, swagatam, welcoming. Oh, you've come, wonderful, welcome. Come in, I'm glad you came, tatam swagatam. And so, an example, so in the tantras, I don't have the verse right now, there's the formula of how items are offered. Right, it says you name, you point to the item being offered, right? And so, like, uh, 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 like, like, if I'm offering like a flower, Esha, Esha, Idam, Idam, Satchanapushpam, Idam Pushpam, this with this flower, right? The mantra says this flower, right? And then the then like, oh, let's, let's say Om Namah Shivaya, right? With this flower, I worship Shiva. Then you say you 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 name the 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 item, right, and then you uh, uh, state the mula mantra, the mula, the mantra that's being used for the main mantra being used for the worship. So in our in our puja in the, this book, I'll give you this because this is a mantra that's going to be used again and again. <clears throat> There's many important kali mantras. This is something that's come up amongst discussion of some of the devotees. Um, Actually, there, there, it's, it's listed as, I forget, there's a traditional list of, it's like how many Ganesh mantras, how many Shakti mantras, how many Shiva mantras. It may be symbolic numbers. You know, there's a million Ganesh mantras and a half a million Shiva mantras and uh, 132,000 Kartikeya. And there's, there's lists like that, right? The point is there's a lot of mantras, right? And nowadays, you can www.coolsecretmantras.com. You can find out all the cool secret mantras, you know? Or actually, you can't. You find out some secret mantras cool secret tantric mantras right but the fact that it it, it can it be looked at we used to have a we used to actually had a joke website called www.coolsecretmantras.com it's no longer there <laughs> but we kind of like hide stuff amongst our friends just to share silly things amongst our friends but um it's their secret mantras right so now you can look them up like this book has a mantra om ring kring sima dakshana kalikai devye nama that's that's a mantra it's in the, it's in the book right now and then somebody said, well, there's another month of that. Kring, 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 hung, kring, dakshini kalike, kring, 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 hung, kring, swaha. And then people say, oh, there's om kring kalikae, om um, kring mahakalye, om um, kring badrakalye. There's all these different mantras. There's, um, this one uses another mantra. I mean, we should be saying them, because I'm not going to try to confuse you, but uh, what is it? Om Krim Shrim Krim Parameshri Kalike Namaha. That's another one that's in some of the books, right? Now, what one should you use? Well, of course, it, should, it says it also says in the Tantra that one should be initiated in tradition and then follow that tradition. So the, the mantra should be used. The mantra, they're all whatever mantra is given, handed the mantra is handed down tradition. Those are the ones you should use, right? So that's the tradition. The problem now is that it's, nobody knows how to. That's not a thing. How do you find? How do you initiate into tradition? People, I really want to worship Ma, and I found that you know I found your book online, and it says this mantra, but I but, I, but another website said this mantra. Which one should I use? It's very hard to answer because this question should have never ever come up ever, right? This is a modern problem, you know, that these mantras would only be known, the mula mantras used in pujish would only be known. They'd be give, they'd be given the, the main mantra to be given through initiation. Right. So, anyways, this this mantra is the one given. This is a, a classical um, 
I can't say it's a Bengali month. It's not a Bengali month. It's a Sanskrit month, right? But it's it's I can't even say it's famous in Bengal because mantras aren't famous or secret, right? So it's, it's very hard to say. It's not like it's not like popular. Nothing's popular. You know, mantras shouldn't be popular, right? Uh, 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 but it's a mantra that comes from a Bengal from from a Bengali school of tantra. We could we could say it like that, right? And there's different forms of it. There's also a thing. This is something something I hate to. This is a a not usually spoken, but a, a, a detail. But generally speaking, right? Um, um, there'll be many different forms of the same mantra. Right. All of a sudden, like there'll be. An example, I mean, I just slightly make up an example, not fully, but this is an example. Like, you have Namah Shivaya, and you have Om Namah Shivaya, Hrim Namah Shivaya, Om Hrim Namah Shivaya, Om Ram Namah Shivaya, Ram Harham Namah Shivaya, Om. Om. You know, it's like, it's like the original mantra, who knows what the original, we know in the, in the, in the, in the, in the um, uh, Rudram, it's Namah Shivaya, Panchakshara mantra, right? But nobody, almost nobody chants just a five syllable, they don't chant a five syllable form of it. So, why all these different forms? Now, it could be, oh, this is a way uh, it was initiated, the guru initiated into this mantra, he passes on the same mantra, passes on the same mantra, passes on the same mantra. That's sometimes the case. That's often should be the case. But sometimes it's the exact opposite, right? Because the guru cannot say his own mantra into the ear of the disciple mm-hmm. by some tantric traditions. So they'll slightly change the mantra, but they won't really change the mantra, mm-hmm. right? So it'll be Om Hrim or Hrim Om. Or Hrim Shrim, or Om Shrim, or Om Shri, or you know, it's like it's like it's like these slightly differences, right? And these slight differences is so that 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 because the rule is, right, that never reveal your mantra, right? Not even to your disciple, <laughs> but you do pass on the mantra to your disciple, right? You know, so there's some that's this is not a universal. I'm just giving this is something, so uh, so so it's not always clear. Uh, this is a this is a tantric tradition also. That the guru will not give exactly the mantra, of, 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 uh, but something very close, right? Close enough, right? So similarly, like like you see, so you'll see some books in in some where like here it says Om Kring Sima Dakshina Kadikaya Devi Nama. Others says Om Hrim Kring Sima Dakshina Kadikaya Devi Nama. Others leave out the Om. Some of them add another mantra, another Bij mantra. Sometimes there's no Bij mantra. Om Sima Dakshina. You know, what's the difference? And in one sense, the mantra is complete. The Bij mantra changes a little bit to the flavor. Right, different things that are brought out of it. So that's why people like in the earliest version of our puja book, way, way, way back when, right, uh, the, the small little book that we sold, right, the little simply original simple Kali puja. I think it was Om Kring Sima Takshana Kali Kaya And then in, in supplement printings, it was Om Hrim Kring Sima We added Hrim. We didn't add Hrim. It's another form of the mantra. And there was a reason. There was an, there was a debate and discussion whether or not to include that. Slight difference. It changes the count, mm-hmm. makes it sixteen syllables instead of fifteen syllables. That it has some benefit. There's there was a there was a a, a learned debate, <laughs> and uh, uh, on on which one, but it really doesn't matter. It does matter and it doesn't matter, right? Uh, so the, the uh, uh, and so there's other mantras and other texts. That's because there's other mantras and other traditions. And ultimately, the guru is the one who gives you the mantras for for the puja, the mantras that are used in puja, either directly by whispering them into your ear or by here. This is your puja book. Do it. It could be that simple too, right? So, so the the, the method of offering the six the sixteen thirty two fifty four sixty four five or ten items is you name the item, right, and then say the mula mantra. I remember mula mantra. We've talked about all kinds of mantras. Mula mantra is is means a root mantra, and it includes a mula mantra has three. Everybody know what the three sides, the three parts of a mula mantra are. Have three qualities or three aspects to be a mula mantra in classic sense, right? You know what they are. Hmm? Length. No, no, that's a, that's a different way of it. I know what you but no, it's a different. Way. So, like in Om Namah, let's look, look at like classic one, Om Namah Shivaya. Right? I'm saying that because everybody knows it, but it's actually the one of the most secret and powerful mantras in existence, right? But it has to be received properly in order to be the most powerful secret mantra, secret, secret, secret mantras. Of, uh, <laughs> it's like, see, I mean, we care, have to be careful how we're saying the open secret. You know, we, have a, we publish a book called the Secret Doctrine, published. You know, it's like, you know, that's a weird thing about esoteric traditions that they're pushed. You know, but uh, but I'm using this as an example, like Om Namah Shivaya. So it has in order to, it has 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 a nam, the name, which is Shiva, right. You have a kriya, an action, namaha, I bow, 
right? And you have a bija, a seed, om, right? Om Namah Shivaya. Although three together are usually seen as the as, as the as the nature of a mula mantra, compared to other types of mantras, right? Like a bij mantra is just a seed. It doesn't have it doesn't have a name. It doesn't have an action, right? Right? Uh, like om doesn't have a name, right? It doesn't have an action. Right? So in in the in in the sixteen items we start swagatam su swagatam. Or idam swagatam, you could say. We offer this welcome. But that's a weird thing to say. Usually, would, so this first month, of the, the whole rule I said, you first name the, name the item, point to the item, name the item, and then say the mantra. It starts out with me already breaking that rule. Usually, we don't say idam swagatam. With this welcome, we worship you, the divine Dakshina Kali. We say swagatam su swagatam. Welcome, a most auspicious welcome, a good welcome to you. Right? So it's a little more, it's a, it, the formality of the, the rule is, slight, is softened. So it says, most welcome, most welcome. Swagatam, su swagatam. We welcome you, we welcome with, with an auspicious welcome. We welcome you. Swagatam, su swagatam. And then the mantra. Om, kring kring sima takshana kalikaya devi namaha. Swagatam, su swagatam. So when you welcome, then, then what do you do? So, so, uh, so it could also be, so it could just be that in a more elaborate puja, like a 16 item puja we're supposed to do, then there, there's also mudras. There, there's mudras for, I don't remember, I didn't prepare it, I, don't, I may not remember all the mudras for all the offerings, but each of the 16 offerings has a separate mudra, right? It's like, for instance, you can do, uh, uh, or sometimes, uh, um, so you can imagine, just like, swagatam, you're welcome, you know, come, you know, we use, we can almost see the hand gesture for it, swagatam, su, swagatam. Right, may, may please, please come. And there's also um, um, uh, there could be a verse describing the invitation, right? And so the, in Vaishnava literature, there, 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 it's sometimes there's the exact same verse according across traditions. This was a masculine or feminine. Sometimes they're slightly different. So if it's something to do with Krishna, it may be you know, you know, after I, mean, I don't, I'm making this up a little bit, but you know, after uh, uh, walking in the fields of, of Vrindavan, please. Please come and sit down so we can worship you. You know, it could be something specific like that. I'll give you an example of such a verse for that one itself. Swagatam Sri Swagatam. Like me. Oh Mahadevi, you are the bestower of all happiness. Please come here and remain seated here till this entire worship is over. At my at this my invocation, O goddess of all decay and growth and prosperity, may you come here. I totally surrender myself to you and invoke you here. Next bit. May the goddess voluntarily occupy this seat embedded with many gems and precious jewels, along with this invitation to you to occupy this seat. I surrender myself unto you and invoke you, O goddess of all growth. And it goes like this, right? So there's, there could be, a, you can extend this into, into verses and hymns and, 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 and prayers, an example. So, so then, then we offer, if you come, then what do you offer? The first thing you offer is the place to sit. Idam asanam, with the seat, and then the mantra. Right. And so sometimes you actually offer an asan. Even though we have a goddess made of stone here, or made of consciousness, sorry, I must get a spiritual blunder. Um, um, so what you do? Some, but so I mean, so she's already seated, and you've already invoked her. She's seated in, the, in it. But sometimes you actually offer them. They'll actually have like a little golden silver throne or silver throne. And it's like offered on a plate or something, and then put like that. Or sometimes there'll be a leaf with a drop of honey, and that leaf and the honey becomes the asan, a sweet, gentle. An auspicious place for her to sit, right? So usually, in our habit, we usually, you know, it's like we just assume she's sitting on this beautiful wooden shrine that we've like we built for her, right? So, or in the yantra, we swagatam su swagatam, idam asanam, and sometimes there's also you can there's different mudras. This is um, uh, 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 this is also a mudra. This is for the um, um, like the lotus of the heart. Right, you're offering the lotus first. There's remember, remember we did all this internally. So the internal, you can compare them. What was the what was the lotus? What was the seed we gave her? We gave her a heart. So now you're externalizing the heart. Right, this is a lotus. In case you're wondering, there's a mudra for that. So gadam suidam idam asanam. What's next? At the podium, then we then we wash her feet. 
right? So we you, we, we take some water from the fresh kushi, ring the bell, and then think of it kind of holding up towards her feet, you know, and imagine washing her feet. If you had an image that you could bathe, you could actually, you know, pour it on her feet, right? That's another thing you could do, right? Idam asanam, um, at the padyam, was this water washing your feet? But what are we really offering? In, in the internal worship, it was the water from the thousand petals, lotus, the, from the union of Shiva and Shakti, the Amrita dripping, right? That's the water we use for washing our feet. So it's, we've connected all these things. Now we're doing all these things that we've realized, imagined, felt, visualized. We're now doing, we're literally doing. Now, now that's this water now. That water is this water. Washing our feet at, at the padyam. What's next? Feet, uh, oh, idam asanam sagatam susagatam. I may have got those mixed up. Sagatam sagatam at the padyam idam. Oh, then then there's argya. Argya is next, I think. So remember, we've talked a few times about argya, but it's usually an, uh, a flower with some leaves and sandalwood paste and rice. It's like a, a, a respectful offer. I kind of compared it to like like a like a, like a corsage to to uh, on, on you know some auspicious thing you give somebody or a wedding, you know, a, um, uh, what is the bouquet that a, that a woman would wear at, at the wedding or presenting a, um, a, a, a bouquet at the, at, at the end of a show or a concert to an important person, you know, some it's auspicious presentation. And so generally in our Tantra tradition, we see that as a specific mixture of holy things, auspicious leaves and like that. And remember, we've offered it twice already, once to the, when we established the the koshkushi, the, the water vessel, and again recently when we established the conch. So often the the the, the argya that's already been prepared and offered into the conch, that itself is is offered as argya, right, and presented to her. And usually at this point it's either touched to her feet, it's put there, but often it's touched to um to uh, her four hands, her two feet, like it's it's touched to various parts of her body. And then and often put on top of her head. We I think there's one there now, right? Then behind Ma's head, behind her crown, it's put on top of her head as a respectful offering. Um, often, like, it, like if if you ever seen the if you ever you haven't maybe you have you have, but the it sat through the pujas at Belermat, right? The, at the at Thakur's temple, it's very beautiful to watch because they're very expert and very elaborate and perfectly done, right? And very clearly spoken, you know. So it's an interesting. You want to learn puja? Just watch it. I just I just watched them. What are they doing? Right, we don't do that, or we were, or realize we're doing that wrong. We can see how you get the very so carefully done, right? And you'll see that the pujari will get up and go and and, and do and put it on top of his head, and then he'll come back and do do does the shastanga pranam, right? and then he sits back down. He's like, it's a very very respectful. It's like it's like the given to a very respectful. It's a respectful act of worship to a very respectful guest, and so argya would definitely be given to royalty or to a god or goddess, you know. Uh, very special formal offering, but there's another interpretation of argya. It could also just be water for washing the hands. So sometimes in in, a, in an emergency, like 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 emergency could be you don't have an extra three seconds to prepare an argya, and the puja is going to and your back's hurting and like that. So you can. So sometimes when people just offer a spoonful of water as argya, ida margyam, and the water is represents, and the mantra and the water represents that offering. It could also be interpreted for washing your hand, ida margya, right? It's a certain because in certain sense the argya will be placed into her hands. Like you pick, give a bouquet, so it has that similar. It can be interpreted both ways as, as water for washing the hands or as a respectful um, symbol of of worship, like this. Idam argyam, idam achamaniam, water for rinsing the mouth, right? And so we've we've did achaman at the beginning. Om Vishnu, Om Vishnu, remember or Om Aim. Aim um, I'm sure what is I'm at Matatam Jore Amiswa. We've gone through this is a long time from class one, I think, or class two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm rinsing my mouth to see. Perfect timing <laughs> for Idam <laughs> Chimaniam. And so we rinse the mouth before doing starting to chant mantras, but there's many occasions to rinse the mouth. And so this is actually considered one of the, like if somebody comes in after a long uh, trip. So you want to freshen up? It's like if you need to use a restroom, you, you can freshen up and splash water on your face, and you know it's like that type of thing. And so, but anything auspicious, inc- we rinse our mouth before doing anything auspicious, saying auspicious mantras, auspicious mantras, right? But we also, but the deity also washes its mouth, 
his mouth, her mouth, right? Before doing auspicious things, like accepting your worship. Interesting. And, and, and there's many, so we, we, we offer water rinse her mouth. And then again, if she's given something to sip, some, some food or something to eat, then again, she has to, you have to rinse her mouth again, right? So it's also, this is good behavior. The problem is we don't do that, right? You know, after eating, you rinse your mouth. Right. Actually, you should wash your hands. You know, we, have, we have the tradition, you have to be in law school, so to wash your hands before you eat. Right. You know, we're in a cup, we always wash our hands before you we wash your hands, we have to go eat. It's time to eat, especially if you use your hands, you know. But, but, um, but we're not trained to wash our hands after we eat. Right. When after, after eat, we've touched food, we've touched our mouth, we've touched food that's touched our mouth, all kinds of things that they're just, it's not the, and, and so it's not ritually clean, it's not too cheap, but also it's like not physically clean. You've touched sticky things. And so you wash your hands and wash your mouth, right? So we, many times a day, go and wash our hands and mouth. So like when we're, when we're serving each other food, whoever's serving should be clean. And, and we uh, theoretically, people's mouths and, and hands should be clean before honoring prasadam, before taking auspicious food. The act of ritually eating the blessed food should be clean. Uh, but then afterward, you know, it's like, we usually we go up, wash our mouth, and especially before you wouldn't. We do a, a, a we've westernized a little principle. Usually, the person who serves food doesn't eat till after, right? You after you feed everybody, and then 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 you eat yourself because you have to be clean to serve, right? And it's the idea we eat together. You I serve you, and then afterward I'll, I'll I'll it's like we serve ma, and afterward we eat. So we serve our guests, and afterward we eat. But we can't do that every day. We eat together. So we and we and so so whoever. You know, gets up and you know to serve seconds. What do we do? They go to the bathroom, wash their mouth, wash their hands, then go and serve. Now they serve the food like that. And after everybody eats, they get up, get up, go to the bathroom, wash their mouth, wash their hands. So similarly, we wash, we washed, we wash her mouth. Then in elaborate pujas, there's madupur, maduparka, madupurka, madupurka. I think it's called, which means um, well means madu means uh, 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 um, sweet or honey, right? So it's like I don't know how to how to. It means it's it's a it's a it's a it's a sweet drink for sipping, like 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 a, I don't know how in in Western example of what that is, but it's 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 a it's made of actually it's made of like, um, milk, ghee, yogurt, honey, sugar, this type of thing. It's like a small like a and usually they're given a small. It's prepared separately, madu madu purka is a special offering, and that's like a sweet drink to as a sweet drink, right? But then after that, what do you do? Got to wash the mouth again, right? So again, now now it's now instead of achamaniam or achamaniodakam, it's pun achamaniam or which uh, puna achamaniam to water to re rinse her mouth. The first one is to rinse her mouth. Now is to wash her mouth again after eating. So every time Ma is offered something to eat or drink, water is again offered to rinse her mouth. Right uh, 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 uh. after she's fed, it's done after and then again before she gets fed before and after she gets fed full food. A second meal, we we feed her sweets as part of hers, and then there's cooked food at the end. Another set of offering for rinsing the mouth before and rinsing the mouth after. Right. Remember, a lot of it's about purification, right? We do so much purification, right? Mm. In the ten item, it's not there. In sixteen item, the the these things are there. Then what do we do? Uh, uh, Iram argam, madupurkam, achaman, then what? I think bath, right? Snaniam, snaniam, bath. And of course, why does you need to? Why do you need to bathe ma? She's clean, right? But we take baths, so we have to. Uh, there, this, this, there, and this, and of course, what's the what's the? We give. We've been giving all kinds of symbolic meanings of these things, right? And that's our tendency: <laughs> symbolic meaning, giving symbolic meaning. What does it mean? So I can get we we're, that's kind of our specialty. We can fill in those things to make it meaningful to us. Although it doesn't matter what pleases her. Ultimately, the place to please her that we're doing these things. She likes it. She said so. Actually, how do you know about? It's in the tantra. This is exactly how she how she likes when I you know when I show up. This is what you should offer me. You know, so it's uh, it's given in the ancient. This is the way the the ancient protocols were, right. I, I've told the story before, but I, many, 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 many years ago, I was still in high school, I think, and it was here at the Las, at Laguna Beach Hare Krishna Temple, and there's the Snanyatra. The Snanyatra is the bathing ceremony for Lord Jagannath, and it takes place approximately two weeks before Ratyatra, 
right? So he gets yeah, everybody gets to bathe Lord Jagannath, and it's nice because Lord Jagannath has a different set of like rules as far as who can touch him. So even the temple deities, people can bathe him, right? This I don't know about now, but that was the standard that you could actually come up and bathe. Instead, not just a priest, but there's a there's a there's he's very merciful and not so strict. There's not, not as many reactions as striking up. So we were allowed. To, so there was a festival. Everybody got to come and bathe him. But then the problem: if you bathe God, and, you know, and, and what happens? If you don't dry him properly, he gets sick, catches a cold, right? And has to has to go to visit some family member while he gets well. And then eventually, when he gets a little better, right? Then he'll come back. And that the return festival that's called Ratayatra, when he's coming back to the temple, that's when he pulls the carts and everything, right? The whole lila, right? So it was that festival. They were bathing Lord Jagannath. And then Badahari Prabhu, he gave a very nice class, uh, maybe before before the thing. And I asked him, so my question is like, so what's the symbolic? What is it? What's the symbolism of bathing Jagannath? Right. So it's like because that's not the right question for him. You know, it's like because actually it's not the right question. But I was looking at what it means like because I was also a little bit trained in a, in a group that gave everything. Like, they, I can't say watered it down, but definitely westernized everything. You know. Where because oh this is to purify your subtle body, or this is to the offering of you know it's like giving everything's given that it's a it's 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 never what it is it's always means something it's about your astral body some yogic you know <laughs> type of thing you know and so that was my question I didn't understand what the, what could this mean right and so I remember him looking kind of compassionate at a dumb question or <laughs> what he considered to be what he clearly considered to be a dumb question uh, and he says so. You take a bath every day, right? He goes, yeah. So, so, so does Jagannath, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And today, he's so merciful that he's letting us bathe him and see his bath. Usually, this is done by the pujaris behind closed doors. So, I guess it's symbolic of that he's merciful, <laughs> that letting us <laughs> letting us bathe him. Like that was a. I still remember that was. 35 years, 30 years ago, yeah. 35, whatever it was. Yeah. But Pepper's point was well, well taken. It's actually symbolic of his mercy, right? So it doesn't have to have some other meaning. It's we, we, we take a bath, God takes it. What are the ways you worship? The way we, we, we're serving as if they're real, because they are real. Serving as if it's a guest or a royalty. And a royal bath is not actually, it's another thing. This idea, when we do like a, here it can be done very simply, but when you see like a, like, like um, like on Janma, when we do a big bathing, a public bathing ceremony where your your deities are in front and they're dressed differently in, in a in a bathing tray and and they're honey and all kinds of shivarachi, we're doing all this type of bathing, bathing, that type of bathing, is also part of a coronation ceremony. We the word abhishekam is the same word for coronation, right? When a king is coronated, right, they call his abhishekam, which involves him sitting in the middle of something and people pouring auspicious waters and all the all the uh, local leaders members of the family the brahmanas he's like by them bathing they're they're giving their blessing and consecrating it's a consecration of it uh, uh, even at the time uh, in the tantric tradition part of the purification before initiation they call it abhishek have you, have you done your did, did your abhishek him? right it is, and usually sometimes it's literally you have to sit in the bucket and, and all these holy water to bathe on you it can be more simple. It could be a sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. It's my, we could, we've, we've simplified it, right? Right. But that is, it's like, then you, you can't be you, you can't be initiated without the abhishekam. There's no consecration. You have to, because your old karmas are washed away. Purification, shuddha karma. Purification has to happen. So, the, the uh, 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 so elaborate, word, elaborate bathing is a sign of royalty, the way you treat royalty. But regular bathing, is, 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 you're going through all the, the, the stages of somebody's day. The stages of somebody stay at their at your house, they take a bath, they have you give them. If somebody comes in and they take a shower at your house, right? What do you do? You oh, there's fresh towels. Do you need anything? I'll, I'll put fresh soaps out for you, right? You know, you know that you set things up. Is that in a certain her toilet in a certain sense? You know, her her you you taking care of those type of things. You bathing, and so we don't have our deity is not easily bathable, right? You have, you'd have to take her off the shrine, which we can't do, and you have to undress her, which takes takes five hours to redress her with all the jewelry. We do it very rarely, the actual bathing of the, of the, of the murti. So we do it um, via a medium, right? Sometimes there's another deity. I told you there's a, um, what do they call it? The Utsav murti, the processional deity. That's often, often another deity, a smaller form. That's what we talked about, I think, last week. We talked about the week before last. 
with Sadmukti. So that can be done through, the bathing could be done through a smaller deity. Or it can also be done through a Shiva Lingam. The Bana, remember we talked a lot about the Banishwa, the Bana Lingam Puja. He's established so that he can take moth bath. You can bathe the deity through the Shiva Lingam. Right? So there's a process to establish the, as Shiva as Banishwar and then use Banishwar to, to, to bathe the main deity. Right? Or you can do a Yantra, a Sri Yantra. There's different things like a Shalagram. Can be, everything can be done through something like that. Or sometimes, just in the bathing bowl, Right, you know, you imagine she's you've, you've invited her, please come and sit in the please stand here and we're going to bathe you. And then you pour into the bathing bowl, knowing that she subtly has come, you know, she if she can if she can jump out of your heart onto the shrine, she can step into a bathing bowl, mm-hmm. right, and accept, and accept your bath, you know, allow us to bathe her this way, right. So, uh, so we generally I bathe her through the I tend to bathe through the Shivalingam. Other people, and you know, like the different pujaris here, sometimes have like a deity that they worship, their own deity, a Shalagram or Sri Yantra or Shivalingam, and then whatever it is, it doesn't almost doesn't matter what it is, as long as you've established that we're bathing this, and it's the same as bathing Ma, right? And again, when we talked about the Shiva puja and the bathing of Ma, the bathing of Shiva, there is also something it does purify us also. Right, it does purify because she's us. We've established her as our body. Her pranas are our pranas. Her nervous system is our nervous system. Right, her skin is our skin. Her, you know, it's like we're, there's identity. And she's also the universe. Right, so she purifies when you bathe her, and you clean her body, the image or statue or shalagram or shivalingam or yantra. We also feel bathed, and the whole world is is refreshed and bathed, and you feel it actually. Right there's a, there is a be- benefit to the environment for sure, believed environment, but also perceivable benefit uh, uh, to to the environment. In bathing, the time. Okay. Now, when you bathe, usually we a bell is ran- rung, rung. Ring, you do it while ringing the bell, right? And I uh, um, and so in the daily when we do it, we take the the smaller spoon and. And with water, and then you often put um, auspicious things in it, uh, sandalwood paste, um, perfumed oil, sand, you know, different things like make it a rose water, make it auspi- make an auspicious bath water. And then in the Ramakrishna Bush book, they, they chant four mantras, right? And for I don't, they're not on top of my tongue right now because it's never, we never, some another never attracted me these four mantras as, as and so we use, oh, we use. There's other sets of mantras we use while bathing, and I just use the other ones, and never really learned embarrassingly the four mantras, although I should know them. They're the first mantras from the four Vedas, right? <laughs> so by by rep by symbolically saying the first mantra of each of the four Vedas, you are chanting the four Vedas, right? Right. So therefore, the bathing is done with the chanting of all the Vedas, symbolically through their first. I mean, like the first one on. Agnimi ile porohitam yagnyasa deva mrititam hota aratna tatat. That's the first mantra from, from uh, Rig Veda. And it goes on like that to, to the four. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember. If I had them, I could chant them. I kind of know them, but not by heart. Um, there's another thing that's actually used in our book for a long time, but it's not in the book, that are four mantras that are from the four Vedas. They're not the first mantra of each, but they're a mantra from each of the four Vedas, right? And when added up, at equal 108 syllables. So now that now you're getting fun tantric stuff, you know, it's like a mantra from the four Vedas that add up to the, to the the one of which which is is Trambha Kamnya Jamahe. The and that's a very common mantra for bathing Shiva, right? It's a very famous mantra. We use that mantra for Abhishekam. That's one of them, right? From the Krishna Yajur Veda, I think. Uh, uh, and so the other mantras are also there. One of which is still in our book. The only one that's has made it to the latest version of our our our. our iPad-y version of the book, uh, uh, and I don't remember which beyond I don't remember which month beta it's from, right? And it's but this mantra is all about Abhishekam. So it's a, this will give a little hint about the nature of the Abhishekam. Om Amrita Abhishekostu, Kana Kanaka Abhishekostu, Hiranya Abhishekostu, Suvarna Abhishekostu, Divya Mangala Abhishekostu, Mahabhishekostu. Abhishek means I bathing with what? With this, we offer, we offer, kostu means we offer, amrita abhisheka. We offer a bath of amrita, of nectar. Kannaka abhisheka. We offer a bath of grains, of, of, of rice, and this is also one of the things, right? 
Hiranyabhishekostu, we offer a, 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 a bath of gold, Hiranya. Suvaranabhishekostu, we offer a bath of jewels. Right. And then Divya Mangalabhishekostu, we worship um, Divya Mangalabhisheka, a bath of, of, of divine auspiciousness, a divine auspicious bath, right? Mahabhishekostu, we offer a, the great bath or a great bath, right? the complete bath. Right, that's one of those mantras. And so sometimes you can just use just one mantra. That mantra represents that. Or, as I mentioned, each of these offerings has a different mantra that can be a different verse. So sometimes it's also, you remember we did the Gange Cha Jamuni Chaiva, Guravari Saraswati, Narmade Sindukaveri, Jale Smin Sarihin We do that to invoke the seven rivers into the water. Now, we've already invoked the waters. So we don't need to invoke them again, but you can still name them. So there's another mantra which I don't think is in the book. I don't think it's in our book, but I, I, I learned it long. It's one of them that's in my mental book. So I use this one when I'm doing it. Let me find it here. The ending's a little different. Om Gange Cha Jamuni Cha Vigravari Saraswati Narmari Sindukavari Snanartam Pratta Grihyatam Right. Uh, oh Goddess, this water collected from Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati, Guravari, Sindukavari, and Kaveri rivers are for the purpose of your bath I now offer you. I've gathered these holy waters. May these be for your bath. Right? So it's also a very nice mantra you can do, right? Different things. Or you can do the, um, what is it, the um, Gayatri mantras of the Devi. Or, or, or in elaborate pujas, what do you do? It's called Pancha Shuktam Abhishekam, where you chant five Shuktams, right? Five hymns, right? And the classic one, from here, I get this right, the Yudli is uh, Narayana Shuktam. Shri Shuktam, Purusha Shuktam, um, um, uh, section from the Rudra, the first part of the Rudram. And then the fifth one, usually it's um, it, uh, um, Devi Shuktam. Devi Shuktam, right? So these five are, so people, when doing elaborate pujas, they, you offer, you chant these five uh, uh, Shuktams. That's when you're doing more, like that, that would take 15, 20 minutes probably to chant quickly, you know. So uh, the, the, the Abhishekam mantras are there. No. Anyway, like that, there's so many things that can be chanted. So after off, off, after bathing Ma, what do you offer? After you take a bath, what do you do? Hmm? You, you get you get dressed, right? Or you dry off and get dressed. You know what or you get so so one next one is Iram Bastram. I offer cloth. Which one is doing that? The big ones? So it's, uh, it's uh, let's turn it up, or turn it down, and then all the way up. Turn it all the way up. I have to do that, I think, or down. Let it get wet. It's some struggle with our lights. Let's see what happens. Up, up until it stops flashing. The higher up, the no. up, 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 up until it stops flashing. That's a shame. <laughs> These are expensive. <laughs> You can turn it off then, maybe. Yeah, I think we'd have to. <laughs> what are the the um the other ones? These none of these lights are on. Are the ones that for the roof? Um, the the other yeah the the roof lights and and the one from the back also the roof the one on the back for the upper roof. And the yeah the one the yeah. yeah thank you. Anyways, lighting. Sorry for the. Disturbance. Um, so iram vastram. So sometimes that could be as simple as waving a cloth or offering a cloth, right? Or sometimes that could be vastram means like a sari or, cl or a wearing cloth, right? But sometimes in a labor puja, it's not just vastram. You don't just give a cloth for drying. If you give a cloth for drying, you also give a cloth for wearing. Or if you give a cloth, if you give one cloth, you give a lower cloth and an upper cloth, like a sh like be a shawl or something. So then it becomes like uh, uttariya vastram, the upper cloth. There's different mantras that can be offered according to what's being offered. That can be extended into what if you give, then you also, for Ma, we give lots of jewelry, right? So there's different mantras for jewelry, uh, Abrani, uh, like different different mantras like that can be done for, for bracelets, for necklaces. Uh, there's a mantra for um, um, eye makeup, you offer then um, uh, uh, eye makeup, you offer Ulta for the feet. A red red dye for the feet. There's all these things you can give. Kumkum, kumkumachurnam, 
haldi and all these different things that are you can expand these things but generally the decor, decorations jewelry uh, decorations bindis all these type of things are offered right then cloth then what then we then then we go back now we now we've kind of reached where our five item puja started right then we offer perfume or fragrance then we offer flowers flowers and leaves Right for Ma, we also offer her Bible leaves, the the, uh, the Shiva leaf, the favorite of her, flowers, leaves, and the, the and then if it's one flower, it it idam satchandana pushpam, eshaganda for perfume idam idam we use idam satchandana pushpam satchandana pushpam flower with chandan, with sandalwood paste, right that's important. We don't offer flowers without sandalwood paste, right idam satchandana pushpam. And then, uh, and then, and then, if leaves, then or if more than one, if there's a, if a handful of flowers, itani satchana pushpani, to more than one, a group of flowers, pushpani, and then for leaves, idam bivla patram or satchandana bivla patram, leaves touched with sandalwood paste, or if it's more than one, itani satchana bivla patrani. You know, there's different. These are just the way you change the mantra to fit it, how we're offering the 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 the, the mantras. And then, incense, dupa. Esha dupa, with this incense. Chikali om ring ring simatakshana kalikai devi. And we worship Kali, right? And you see, this is the thing where we actually start seeing us, you know, at the end of the, almost at the end of the puja, the puja's gone on for two, three hours. You know, the final thing with things are being now offered to Ma. Oh, Pushpa Malam after flowers is also, so Ganda Pushpa Malam is one example, with a garland of, uh, Fragrant flowers, with good smelling flowers. So Ganda Pushpa, right? Not just fragrant flowers. It's all not every fragrance is good. Good, good smelling flowers, right? So like that, you can keep offering different mantras like that. And then Dupa, then Deepa, Esha Deepa, right? Was this offering of light? Now it's interesting. What do we, how do we? We're offering light to the Divine Mother. So this is given. Some poets have said it's like offering a candle to the sun, right? <laughs> What do you do? That's natural to do, right? We're not illuminating the sun by this. <laughs> but actually the idea of dupa, deepa, uh, when, when you offer, it also, in the South Indian forms of these mantras, we don't, there's a different ending. We simply say namaha, right? We, but you can also change the ending according to the offering, right? Like, uh, 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 like, uh, like, like, esha dupa, uh, then you can say uh, uh, may, may the offering may you please now accept the the and uh, the the offering of fragrance or, or of incense like this right so deepa uh, deepam darshayami right may, may accept this deepa but and show yourself to me. Right, so that means so if you think in in a room we have like we have our lights flickering. You can see, it's not easy to light a temple, right? But in the ancient world, you didn't light temples, right? You barely lit temples. The temples, we just had a few flickering lights. You have the uh, 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 right on special occasion, you know, like, and in the evening, even in the daytime, sometimes no light would get it. No out, very little outside light would come into a temple, right? At nighttime, no outside light. There is no outside light, right? So what do you do during RT? Right or with like the, the pujari would take a lamp, and, and and hold it at Ma's feet or the deity's feet, and what would you see? You see Ma's feet, and then you raise it up and you hold it to the heart, and you see the body, and then hold it up to the face, and you see the face, and then you wave it around, so you, and you go and you see different parts of the body as she's showing. Darsha, she, the light, the offering of light is actually show, letting us her, letting us see her, who's all light. So it's interesting. That's actually the kind of the form. Dar arati is, is that it used to be imagine if all the lights were off we do that once in a while right then every every wave you see a different aspect of the deity right, right. and also there's Sri Ramakrishna said that imagine uh, 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 we see everything by Ma's light but we don't see Ma is the problem right, right. Uh, uh, so Sri Ramakrishna said an example of a, of, a, of a police constable you know a police officer with, with a flashlight the ancient world's version of a lantern, right? And with that light, it sees everybody. And with that light, we see each other, right? But we don't see the constable, the police officer, right? Unless he shows himself with that light. 
right? He shows, you know, and so you can ask, you know, it's like, like, like who's, you know, you can ask by grace, can you please point the light towards you? And we see, you know, certainly this is kind of the idea of offering of light. We're offering to, we want to see, she's a light of everything by which we see everything, the light of lights, right? Uh, by her, the sun shines. I heard the wind blows, the Panishads declare. So like that. We want to see her with that darshayami. Then, uh, then what? Dupa, Deepa. Then, oh, then Naivedyam. Then, then uh, food. Now, there's different types of Naivedyam. Naivedyam is interesting. Naivedyam is not like with this food, with this offering. Right? Because So it's interesting. The Naivedyam simply means to offer. It doesn't mean food. But usually it means food offering. It translated as food offering, but it doesn't seem so. Actually, we act we with food, with light, with perfume. We can we can we can cover her with perfume, and now she's covered with perfume. With light, we can wave light around her, and now she's been illumined, lighted, right? But with food, you can't like, just shove it in her mouth and make her eat it, right? You know, you you've seen I've, some people, I've seen temples. I mean, you see a lot of home shrines. The little bit every every poster and every picture has a bunch of of a uh, halava stuffed and you know <laughs> it is that's that's that's, that's that is a way of puja you know you feel also if you're in they come to your house they also stuff you with food you know as a visiting guest but uh, but but really we don't say we're feeding you it says we're showing you food we're showing you an offering we put it in front of her and then she can she's seen what we've made for her out of love our purity our devotion like that and then. Perhaps her seeing is enough. She see, and we believe that the Ma sees the food, right? Takur sees the food, right? Holy Mother would make this comment that she that we put food in front, and then <laughs> Takur by by the sight he'd eat the food, right? He actually see a light come from his eyes and take the essence of the food, but sometimes the light wouldn't come out of his eyes, and she witnessed. She she said, no, "I'm not I'm not I'm not getting up until you eat your food." <laughs> a wife can say that to her husband, you know. You're not getting enough when you eat the food. That was her mood towards that. Right. But sometimes when people would bring food, the light wouldn't come out of his eyes. Right. This is like a, this is a psychic vision, a spiritual vision. Right. But she says, okay, you don't have to eat it, but you look at it and know that the people have brought it out of devotion. Of course, we don't know why they brought it, but right. But they've offered it. You can eat it or not, but they've offered it. Right. And this is our mood also. When we, when we, we all the food that comes, we offer. Right, I can't, you know, in most a lot of Orthodox temples, outside food can't be offered. It has to be cooked in the temple, right? Almost, almost any, as long as it's, as long as it's vegetarian, has no onion and garlic, and cooked in clean pots. We think people, I mean, most people today, when we know these people, they're they, they're super high quality devotees with, uh, that know when they're cooking for ma, they use only certain pots. They wash their, you know, a lot of people they bathe before cooking. They use pots that they've only used for, cooking, you know, it's like they know not to taste the food. I mean, there's a standard like that for temple. But we have no idea if everybody who brings food has followed that standard. We hope they do. We put it, in our, it's on our website. <laughs> if you want to bring food, please follow these these standards, right? And so we say, Ma, I don't, I can't guarantee anything, <laughs> right? But they've, they're presenting, people have brought you this food. Please see it. <laughs> Right and eat it if you like, right. That's how her business. We our our duty is to offer it to her, not to make her eat it. You know, we show her the food. Navidya means like with with these offerings, we worship you. With this placement of offerings, we worship you. And then water for rinsing her mouth, again, uh, no water for drinking, and again water for rinsing afterward. You chant mantra while you give her enough time to eat her food, right. And then again water for rinsing her mouth. Because she's eaten, you have to wash her. Even Ma has to wash her mouth after eating. So we should, you get the point, we should wash her mouth after eating. She should wash her mouth and hands after almost everything. When we first, when Haradanji first came, priest from Dakshinishwar, did, we didn't know anything. He didn't trust us to know anything, and we didn't know anything. Both things, right? <laughs> he didn't know if he was going to eat, eat, be able to eat. Their, their, first, their first time they came, their, their, uh, their, uh, their, their, uh, free, their suitcases were full of muri. And tea, because in America, all they do there's only beef in America, you know, right? Everything's unclean. They don't know. They've never been to America. It's like, and so they 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 were going to be here ten days. They're going to live on moody and tea, you know. <laughs> but slowly we said, no, we also have look look we you know, we have special pots. We you know we, you know, and, and it took a long time before they eat our food. They cook their own food and like that. And they were they, they were like, but um, but in the beginning also as soon as somebody showed up, it says go wash. Before they even go, if somebody come in, go wash. 
go wash, washing, 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 washing. Like what's like washing, washing. It's like already washed, washing. You know, because we don't know what we don't we don't have the habit of washing. We touch our mouth, we don't wash. We touch our feet, we don't wash. We touch the floor, we don't wash. We and then with that, we touch mom's food, and we touch, we serve each other. We you know, we we hold the glass with our finger inside the glass. We, I mean, these things. We're not thinking. I mean, it's not maybe not a big deal, but in Indian culture, it's a very big deal. And in puja, it's a super big deal, right? So again, we want. So even Ma washes her mouth and hands after eating. That's the point. And before and after eating. So we're talking. Anyway, sorry, people are just coming. We're talking about the different offerings for Ma. Right. So that's a, that's the well, actually it's perfect timing because that's where it ends. Uh, this is the so so thirty out thirty lectures. Hour and a half each to get us to some to just like here. You don't know. There's more. There's some closing thing. We have to do Mahakal Puja and the food offering, and there's some probably we we'll probably do it in. Ah, Ma, that's the right call to Ma. Uh, it's probably most. My I, I imagine one more meeting we can probably close up. This is the thing. But you know, it's like the actual puja is not much. It's simple, but the preparation, not only the 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 ritual preparation that takes an hour or two or three hours. Right, but the, the hours of preparation to prepare for the ritual, or the weeks of preparation before an amavasha, you know, we start. We should start cleaning. We start arranging and ordering, and two weeks, at least two weeks before an amavasha, we start preparing. Right during our big annual puja, it was our joke was it's six months to prepare, six months to recover. Right, <laughs> but it was almost that. Some things were arranged six months. We had something that were at four months, at three months, at two months. And by two or three months before, it was all day long by many people pre preparation, right? Uh, uh, um, to do and, and it all and it all peaks with one big at the final RT, so everything gets there, right? But it's spectacular. The setup makes it makes the offering spectacular. The offerings are simple, a little incense, and and you can think Ma is doesn't need incense. Ma doesn't need kier. Ma doesn't need coconuts. You know, uh, uh, but. But she wants relationship. Thus, here we are, you know, and we want relationship. That's the reason she's created. If she's manifested as everything, right? And so we need, which what we need to offer. We need to love her, and she needs us to love her uh, for her own joy. So this is a mistake. So it's, next week we'll 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 we'll, we'll do the Mahaka. So after worshiping Ma, then her consort is also worship Mahakala. Of course, you know Vishnu's concert is Lakshmi, Lakshmi's concert is Vishnu, Krishna's culture is Radha, Rukmini, Rukmini, Radha's concert is... You have simple things like that. Kali consort is more complicated, right? Kali's consort is Shiva in general, you could say, but he's, Kali, Kali's consort is Mahakal, the great time, the great killer, the great death, the great time, the great void. The great, I mean, it's very complicated to mention, and we won't get... Anyways, so... When Ma's worship, then Mahakal's worship. And if we're doing a Mahakal puja, then you'd also have to worship Ma. You worship the consort also. Usually, the consort is offered slightly less than the main deity. right? So if we do a 16-item worship for Kali, we do a 10-item worship for Mahakal. If we do a 10-item worship for Mahakali, we do a 5-item worship for Mahakal. If we do a 5-item worship for Kali, like in the small book, we do a 1-item worship for Mahakal. Right? So it's not uh, like this. That's the tradition. So our tradition also, but so we'll end it there because it's we're exactly two minutes late in time for RT. Thank you for your kind attention. We'll continue next. No, yeah, we'll continue next week uh, with Mahakal, and I think the closing mantras maybe, and we'll our punahuti, our final offering after all these months of of, of work, our, we can finish our final puja. Daima, thank you for your kind attention. Daima Kali. All right. They're running around outside. I think there may be a parking problem. <laughs>